Alright guys, so uh, welcome back to another episode of Gonna Talk. As you can see, we're on Twitter. I've just uh, gone to the, um, to search for Arsenal here. Um, you guys can follow me on Twitter. My link is in the description uh, down below. Where if you want to talk about anything in particular, send in any of your thoughts and opinions on stuff. Um, I will go over that, etc. in future episodes. Um... I'm going to start off with, I'm going to let you guys just watch this a little bit recurring and then we'll go through all of the kind of about Arsenal kind of thing basically. Um, first of all, I, it's been a while since I've done one of these and I want to address the main issue for me at the club at the minute which is where's the money basically, like why... We are Arsenal Football Club. We're not some newly promoted side to the Premier League. We've, we've, we've got, you know, decent owners. but Decent meaning fairly wealthy owners. Why aren't our owners dipping into their pocket? Why aren't they giving Emery a little bit more freedom? Giving him more options? And the rest of the, um, you know, the transfer negotiation staff. Why aren't they having... A bigger budget why why so little why all of a sudden has Emery got to do this I know this happened under Wenger but it seems to be more tight this summer and I, you know what I can understand cutting back a bit in January because I'm a, a bit of a believer in you need to get everything done in the summer personally I think the January transfer window for me just kind of uh, ruins morale I think all around overall not just at Arsenal I think with other clubs in general because there are lots of transfer talks and all that kind of stuff and um, uh, yeah I'm not really a big fan of the January transfer window I personally think everybody should have all their business done in the summer um, I can see why the January transfer window is a thing because I know injuries and that can take place and you might want to you know, if you, your main striker gets injured, you might want to sign another one or or whatever. You know, basically, I, I do understand that. I do understand that sort of concept. But what I don't understand, guys, is why everybody else seems to have upped their game. I mean, Chelsea have a ban, yet they are still signing players. They still brought in uh, Pulisic. And I, I, I just... I, I have... I don't know. I'm just really confused. I, I I don't really know how else to put it other than saying I'm like bitterly confused. Um, who is to blame? Is it Stan? Everybody points the finger at Stan and I know that he is the, the sort of part of the issue from what I've, I've read um, online. But also, could you blame Ivan a little bit for leaving us like this as well? I, like I say, we weren't that much better under Wenger, but it, it never seemed to be this bad. Like, it's gotten to the point, guys, where I don't feel any excitement anymore about the transfer window. I'm literally clutching at straws for us to sign. I will take anybody at this present moment in time just for the sake of us having a new signing. I'm seeing left, right and centre every single day on Twitter other clubs with these nice little signing announcement videos and all that and, and my club are just are just posting Lacazette in in the USA. <laughs> I just I don't know man, I, I don't know what's going on. Um let's have a scroll down now, shall we, and have a look at what, what other people are saying. So Chris McLaughlin says Celtic knock back Arsenal's latest bid for Kieran Tierney. Second offer was worth up to twenty five million. Like I just, we're, we're going all out for this Tierney guy. He seems to be a, you know, from what I've heard, he seems to be a decent player. I've not personally seen him play, but we're going all out for this guy. And is a left back really our main priority for next season? I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have said so. No, I think we need a centre back. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not getting another left back will push Nacho Monreal into. Uh, the centre back position, then I mean, fair enough. But I, I would prefer us to just go out and buy another centre back. We got Hugh. I, I I do I do love Hugh. Um, stay Arsenal fans unite in mourning over Stan Kroenke. Uh, we care to you. Please spread the message and retweet. We'll give this a little retweet right on video and a little like from Hugh there as well. I'm gonna try and read this because it is pretty small. 
I hope you guys, small printing even, I hope you guys can read it okay. If not, I'll read it out anyway. Um, as Arsenal fans, we have watched with frustration as the team's football performances have declined over the past decade. When Stan began, buy began buying Arsenal shares, the club had just completed competed in a first Champions League final. Right, okay. So I didn't actually know that. 12 years on, Arsenal are about to play in the Europa League for the third year running. It is, it's, it's true. It's, I mean, that those, that fact right there, those facts right there, they don't lie. And do you know what? That opening statement actually shows so much at what Stan has done to this football club, actually. Um, so fair play, let's, let's read on a little bit. Off the pitch, fans have never felt more marginalised, agreed, uh, less listened to or valued. This was sadly illustrated when Stan forcibly bought out the last remaining supporter, uh, supporter shareholders without even a word of appreciation for their custody, custody, custodianship. I'm sorry, I've never heard of that word before. <laughs> Role in the club, fair, you know, fair enough, yeah. Uh, it feels as though Arsenal is at a crossroads. Things need to change. When all, uh, what all of us, basically, yeah, signatories to this statement want to see is meaningful action by Stan to basically, yeah, turn the club back around or to just go. I say personally, um, I don't know if I should read all of this out. This is kind of long. Basically, this requires work to strengthen the club's board and football um, executive and to once again make Arsenal a place where fans have a real sense of belonging. I get that, and I think, you know what, I've given them a lot of stick over the years, but I'm willing to turn over a bit of a, a leaf with with um, Arsenal fan TV and that, because you know what, even if I don't agree with their methods of, of constantly bashing players and stuff, and it's not all of them, I have to say, it's not all of them, but I, that was what threw me the most, is I feel like we gave a lot of harsh criticism to players who didn't necessarily deserve it, you know. And um, uh, I have to say, I think I've turned over a leaf with them. I'm not going to say that I'm going to sit there and watch it all the time, but I'm not going to... I did go at them quite a bit ago. Um, I got into a little bit of shit on Twitter with um, an ex-Arsenal player as well over it. And he was listening to DT, basically. And I thought DT to be one of the worst. But actually, he's probably one of the most okay ones. I've, I've come to realise in the end, you know what? I've, I've turned over a, a bit of a leaf there with, with, with DT. Um, I might even drop him a follow on Twitter after all of this. Um... Basically, KSE's ambitions for the club are to see it competing consistently to win the Premier League and the Champions League. We see little evidence of this to be achieved. We do. We do. Um, instead, our club feels like an investment vehicle personified by the owner's statement that he didn't buy Arsenal to win trophies. I know. Which is just a big no-no anyway. Why... I don't get, you know, why we would want somebody like that leading, you know, at the face of our our club, really. It, it baffles me. It is sad to see an institution like Arsenal um, has such passive ownership. Uh, yeah, this is completely, do you know what, whoever drafted this up, I don't know if it was Hugh, but this is, this is great. All of us want to see a clear sense of purpose and direction. KSE should start by being more open and accountable and explain how they intend to achieve the goal of winning the game's major trophies. If Stan is going to be absent from London, he needs to make sure the board he delegates to is fit for purpose. Yeah. Um... There is a desperate need for some new and dynamic appointments. The addition of independently minded directors can act as a genuine check and balance on the owner. Ideal candidates would have football and commercial expertise relevant to the needs of a football club in 2019 
and ideally some Arsenal DNA, definitely. Um, Arsenal has invested money in recent years, but their approach to both buying players and play- paying wages looks uncoordinated. The Aaron Ramsey situation is a prime example of this with the wages. Um, the buying players, oh God, it, it just goes on and on. I mean, this transfer window, I, I said this before, like to go from being linked to like Ryan Fraser, who I, I, I would still take now, to be honest. I don't think he's a bad player, but we've been from being linked to like Ryan Fraser, it, it, you know, to Yannick Carrasco, then to Zaha, excitingly. Now it's like Saliba, who looks like he's going to be hijacked by Spurs. It's just, a, it, it, it's an absolute shit show. It is an absolute shit show. We are, you know, honestly, a mockery at the minute. We are, <laughs> you just can't take us seriously. You really can't. Um, and appears to lack strategy. Definitely. There, are, there has also been a lot of turnover in the senior football personnel. A strong board would be proactively managing this. Yeah. Next we have, on a match day, the Emirates can be a, a soulless place. <laughs> Christ, they went in, whoever wrote this, they went in. Um, the atmosphere is poor and there are thousands of empty seats lighting almost every game definitely yeah um if arsenal really cared they would make sure seats weren't left empty by investing in an improved ticketing system and actively supporting uh initiatives like stick like safe standing the club uses the strap line always ahead of the game it would be good to see action uh, to demonstrate this yeah definitely like one thing that gets me is you know I live in as, as some of you may or or may not know I live in Stoke and I find it so tough getting Arsenal tickets I really do one is is obviously the pricing um but secondly as well it's like just getting there and and I just find actually getting hold of the tickets to be to be quite it, it, it's tough it's really tough and i think they could they should improve it they should improve it for fans that live you know outside of london like a significant way outside of london as well like myself and um i know that we have large groups of fa- of, of supporters in in ireland <clears throat> um also in like scotland and I, I, you know it'd be good if if um the club did something more for those supporters to help us be able to get to games better organize some sort of coach that would you know run through or whatever i just you know anything literally anything more um because all i've ever seen on ways of like transport and stuff is like fans themselves that have set it up and not really anything that's come from the club you know which is just really bad to be honest it, it really really is bad um the only Arsenal games like I was able to go to in um, <clears throat> you'll have to excuse my throat a little bit in recent years was was when we played Stoke up here at, at the uh, the Bet365 Stadium um, which obviously Stoke are no longer in the Premier League so I can't even have that anymore um, but yeah it is, it is tough it, it is really tough Finally, um, the very pr- fabric of football in England and across Europe is a threat from proposals for a European Super League. These moves are driven by the greed of a few so-called elite clubs who want guaranteed entry into top-level European competition every year. Why care if you finish fifth or lower if automatic qualification is guaranteed? Arsenal and the other clubs involved should understand the fans do not want more meaningless group stage fixtures designed only to rake in more broadcast and ticketing revenue. You could you could call it the franchisation franchisation of European football. This is quite true. I'm I'm really liking this. You know what? Um, Arsenal should immediately clarify that they will have no part in this. As Arsenal supporters, we care deeply. We would like to hear from our club and see actions and demonstrate what that they do. The first 
opportunity comes when the managing director and head of football speak to invited supporters on July the 25th. We urge them to address the issues raised here. We will watch with interest. Wow, let's have a look at all these people that have signed it. So maybe this has been written by multiple people. Hugh's name is on the Arse blog. I'm, yeah, I'm just in some really popular um, sort of big names within the Arsenal the Arsenal lot. Lee Grove as well uh, she wore wow this is awesome guys like I don't know who actually drafted the whole thing up or if it was done between all of these people but like fucking fair play well done um, that is that is actually I think exactly the kind of message that, that we need to um, portray as a club and you know what? I think that's wrapped the whole video up for me I don't think I can come out and say much more uh, um, than that in all honesty I, I really don't look at this Express Sport Arsenal fan group the Black Scarf Movement has issued a statement ordering Stan currently to reinvigorate that was the word so because it, it's in such small print on my laptop i was like I, I was really trying i borderline need glasses as it is guys so i'm sorry if i really butchered that statement um but i hope that by sharing this video i can help sort of create a little bit more you know notice and, and awareness and hopefully that the message does carry on um this is all arsenal fans are talking about at the minute yeah um Everybody calling for Stan. Everybody wants Stan's head. It's it's mad. But it's finally... Do you know what? It is finally good to see us all united. For, for <laughs> it's t it's taken for us to really hit, hit, hit rock bottom. For us all to finally unite with this statement. <laughs> it really has. It's taken... We've gone through some absolute shit. But, um... Yeah... <laughs> 36, ma 36 million rated Arsenal target reveals imminent transfer Thursday. The thing is, I'm just not hopeful anymore. I'm just not fo hopeful at all anymore. Sends urgent Kieran Tierney transfer message to club chiefs. Yeah, he wants him. Emery, you know, give Emery stick all you like. But he he's trying, the guy is. He's trying. He is trying, like. He's got no support. That's the thing that I'm finding. He's got no support. Good to see Hecky B. I mean, I said this the other day. The few positives at the minute are that Ballerin and Holden have both gone um, to the USA with the rest of the squad, which is just, you know, really good to see. And also the youngster, Reese Nelson. We've got Willock as well coming through the ranks. You know, it's going to be exciting to see those next season, but they need some more quality around them. We need more depth within the club. Statement released today sees a broad group of Arsenal fan organisations, bloggers and prominent individuals all agreed and concerned about the way our club is going to be run. I love it. I lo I'm absolutely loving this right now. This is the most united I've, I've seen Arsenal fans on a whole come in such a long time. I can't even like... This, it is, this has been a long time coming. On this day in 2002, wow, this is going to be depressing, isn't it? Arsene Wenger was awarded France's top civil medal, the Légion d'Honneur, after guiding Arsenal to a second English double in four seasons. The order was established by Napoleon, Bona Napoleon Bonaparte, Bonaparte, Bonaparte on 19th of May 1802 and is the highest decoration in France. That's fucking incredible, that. Um, and look where we're at now. Just look where we're at now. This was depressing as well. I saw this earlier. Ramsey's uh, goal versus versus Norwich. And goal of the day. I mean, <laughs> the, the wound is just getting reopened. Breaking, according to Diogo Rossi, Arsenal have made an official offer for Everton, uh, Everton to Gremio yesterday. The club thought the offer was very good. Oh. Well, that's at least somebody thinks some offer is, that we've submitted is, is very good. Um, there's more again. 
Celtic have rejected Arsenal's bid. I mean, how many times are we gonna? How many times are we gonna see these, these three words here together this season? Rejected Arsenal's bid. How many times? Not this season. This summer, even are we? Are we expecting to see that? So Josh Crumpney turns up to the Arsenal training to see a team he family. Oh, and wears a Rams jersey. Really says a lot. Hmm, that's true. That's true. I couldn't agree more, to be honest. You know what? I just can't even imagine. If I owned a football club, if I had shares in a football club, I would literally live and breathe that football. Do you know what I mean? Like, imagine imagine being somebody with that much money and, and having a say. As if you you know whoever you support watching this video right now fucking that guy i don't want to see that guy get that guy off my screen <laughs> but imagine owning um your supported football club like can you imagine the commitment you would put in it's just it's, it's absolutely mental when you consider how poor stan has been like it's unreal so the latest the latest winger we're being linked with now talked about uh Celebre yesterday um earlier on sorry now it's it's everton suarez um from gremio i mean he could be really decent i i don't really have an opinion on him i've not seen that much of him at all um but but yeah whatever old bull gooner Nike trainers he's wearing Josh Nike trainers I mean it's not really much of an issue but if it was Nike trainers and an Arsenal top I wouldn't have minded too much but, but yeah I'm seeing a lot about this guy so he seems to be the latest but you know what I think I have to end it there I think the statement was was enough really for this video um, this is depressing. Bristol City favourites to land Arsenal youngster Eddie Nketiah on loan. So we're looking to loan out Eddie next season as well. Shocker. Absolute shocker. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you're an Arsenal fan, um, hang in there, guys. It's going to get better in time. Like, we've, we're going through a rough patch. And we've been going through this rough patch that has just got rougher and rougher for a while now. But hopefully with this message it's gonna start to come towards um an end but thanks anyway guys and i'll see you all hopefully very soon